introduction. I'm excited. I'm excited to be here today with Our Ladies Cambridge to talk about one of my favorite topics, ggplot, and one of my favorite extension packages for ggplot, giraffe. Uh, I know at first I was like I was pronouncing this ggiraf, uh, but shortly afterwards learned that it's actually pronounced or intended to be pronounced as giraffe. Um, so if you're a ggplot enthusiast like myself and you're looking for other ways on how to make interactive data visualization, hopefully this should be fun and informative for you and very easy to apply in your day-to-day -day ggplot workflows. So a little quick intro. Hi, I'm Tanya. As Rita mentioned, I'm very active on Twitter uh, in the R community. I love sharing my code with other people. Uh, that's how I initially learned how to code was just looking at what people were doing online, uh, especially big shout out to the Tidy Tuesday community. That is the origin of my R love story. Uh, I remember seeing amazing ggplots from several talented individuals, and that's what piqued my curiosity about ggplot in the beginning. Today, I work as an independent data consultant. I specialize in data analysis and data visualization design. Uh, prior to being uh, an independent consultant, I actually work in the insurance industry in a number of data positions. And uh, today you can find me in St. Pete, Florida. So if you're in the area, give me a shout. I love meeting in person. I would love to geek out with you live uh, in the neighborhood. All right. So before we hop into the draft package, I want to talk about a couple of use cases for interactive biz. Uh, there could be a number of use cases, but these are some that I find to be uh, particularly useful in my line of work. So one, one example, for instance, would be exploring data. Uh, so you might have a lot of different dimensions that you want to use, and there's only so many things you can map it to with scale and uh, shapes and color, et cetera. So if you want to reveal more information about the data, like with tooltips, this would be a really cool use case for that. Uh, another popular or common thing that should be top of mind for interactive is, is dashboarding. Uh, because users are so used to business intelligence tools today with the interface of being able to, to hover over things and click on things, this would be a perfect use case uh, for using a package like giraffes, especially with shiny applications. And then last but not least, you've got the ability to add more storytelling tricks, especially if you're comfortable and used to working with online mediums. Uh, so for instance, if you have a Cordo website or you're doing a Cordo, pre Cordo presentation like this in, in Reveal.js, uh, this would be a nice way to create that wow factor. All right. So before, before we dive into it, I just wanna share a little bit of my own learning journey. So at the very beginning of learning R, I was infatuated with ggplot, I still am today. But this year in particular, I wanted to challenge myself to learn how to create interactive visualizations. So with ggplot, you can create beautiful static visualizations. Uh, I was curious, you know, how could I add a, a dynamic component to it? And after doing some Googling, I came across a whole list of different things that you could use. Uh, D3 came up a lot. I had no idea what SVG was and all these other things. I was feeling very overwhelmed and thought, oh gosh, if I wanna get into interactive visualization, I probably have to learn a completely new language like JavaScript. Uh, and that would definitely definitely be a, more, a bigger time commitment than I bargained for. Uh, so to kind of summarize this, here's, here's this little meme uh, of, the, of the two paths here. Of course, it's, it's always shinier to work with something you already know or to build off of something you already know versus learning something completely new could be a huge endeavor and, and can definitely feel scary at first. So this is where Giraffe enters the chat. After doing some more Googling, I thought, well, maybe there's a way we could do this with ggplot already. Since ggplot's my best friend, how could we use this to create dynamic plots? And luckily, there's a brilliant mind uh, that created this extension package that would allow us to convert it into an interactive graphic uh, by converting it into an HTML widget. I could go uh, on and on about all the different ways. I'm amazed by this package, but if you have an appreciation for D3 and SVG, if you look behind the scenes, what it's actually doing is creating uh, SVG elements 
out of different GMs, which is which is really cool. We could explore that with the inspect tool in a minute. The interactivity features that Giraffe um, allows users to explore uh, includes hover events, click events, and tooltips. Today, we're going to be talking a lot about hover events and how to add tooltips. Uh, for click events, this is really a big deal when it comes to using the Giraffe package with Shiny. Because we only have so much time today, though, we won't be covering this section. But definitely invite you to go explore that on your own time after the workshop. Uh, last but not least, different ways that I've used Giraffe with ggplot um, to create deliverables. You could use it to create like a standalone HTML widget. Uh, so if you're not necessarily dealing with like a, a Corda website, you have a Squarespace site, uh, there's a way to use like the HTML widgets package to export these graphics and then embed them via like a code inject somewhere else. Uh, they're easy to embed in Porto HTML docs, just like this one, which is a Reveal JS presentation. Or, uh, as, as previously mentioned, you could use it as a shiny output. By the way, if you've got any questions, please feel free to use the chat. We're going to have some time at the very end to, to uh, open it up for discussion. Uh, but if you want to keep your question fresh in mind, please feel free to use the chat. All right. So quick, uh, quick overview before we dive into it. Uh, today, I, what I hope we'll learn together is just some basic uh, giraffe concepts. Uh, we'll learn enough CSS to get by. So if you are in like the web dev world, you might already be a CSS uh, aficionado, which is perfect. Uh, but if CSS is completely new to you, don't worry, don't panic. We're just going to know um, just enough stuff for you to be able to stylize different elements. We're going to also cover how to add tooltips to ggplot and how to create hover events. Uh, and to explore all of these things, we're gonna run through two examples together in a code walkthrough to see how it all works. Before getting into the code walkthrough, just a quick review of some giraffe concepts. So this should look a little familiar. I wanna talk about the interactive geoms that uh, the giraffe package offers. So, in all, and I actually wrote a script to figure out to see if it, it matches uh, one for one with ggplot, there are a total of 50 interactive geoms. Uh, and what I love the most about this is that there's consistent naming conventions. So for instance, uh, if you're working with ggplot2 already, you should be familiar with these, these geoms. So for instance, if it's geom point, uh, the equivalent in Giraffe to make this interactive would be using geom point underscore interactive. So that's going to be the same naming convention throughout. So it's going to be geom underscore the name of it, uh, the ggplot geom followed by um, underscore interactive. I think ggplot has somewhere around like 53 geoms. And I think there's like three that are, are missing, but I don't think they're too common. It's like geom blank, which wouldn't be too useful in this scenario. So the package developer has done a great job of syncing up all of the ggplot geoms and creating interactive counterparts for them. Some other things before we dive into code. So just understanding some of the geom parameters, uh, like the ggplot2 counterparts, the mapping for the aesthetic component is gonna be the same. Uh, and we're gonna in introduce a couple of new characters or parameters that we're going to be using in our mappings. So the first one, and this is going to be probably the most important one, is the data ID setup. So data ID, uh, typically it's going to be like the unique ID for each record that you want to highlight. You could introduce um, a, like a class ID or a group ID. So if you hover on one thing, it could hover on, uh, it will highlight multiple things all at once. But this is really going to inform and instruct how all the other interactive components are going to work, including uh, hover and tooltip. Hover underscore CSS. Uh, this is perhaps a little self-explanatory. This is just the CSS styling that's going to be applied anytime we hover over an element. So if we're hovering over uh, a point or a line, this is what how, how we're going to stylize it. Tooltip. This is the text that we're going to be passing in. So when you hover over something, uh, what's the text or string that can show up? If you want to do fancy tooltips, uh, another cool trick is you can actually pass through HTML code 
uh, to render something a little bit fancier. So if you wanna like embed an image on a tooltip, you can definitely do that by using HTML. Uh, another um, one that we won't be playing with today, but just to kind of call out, you also have a tooltip fill. So if you wanna change the tooltip color based on different elements, you can also pass a specific color uh, to specify what the tooltip background is gonna be. One more quick uh, concept before we get into the code. Uh, this is kind of like saying giraffe twice. So you've got giraffe the package, not to be confused with giraffe the function, which is part of the giraffe package. Uh, I recently learned that it's giraffe with one F because the developer is actually French and in French, apparently you spell giraffe with one F. I was very curious about that. That was a fun fact that I learned uh, just last week. So what, what does the giraffe function do? So once we've assembled our ggplot with interactive geoms, we're actually gonna pass that plot into the giraffe function to create the HTML widget or the interactive web graphic. Uh, and not only are we going to be creating a widget, but you could also create some other styling options within their giraffe function. Uh, so some things that we'll explore together today are gonna include this opt hover option. So this is the default CSS styling that you can apply to multiple geoms in, instead of just one. The opt hover in function, which is going to apply a default styling to anything that's not being hovered over. And then you also have the opt tooltip function, which helps us stylize the look and feel of the tooltip. All right, enough of, of me going over some of the concepts here. I think the fun part will be seeing uh, the package actually in action. So I'm gonna actually skip from the code first and see the, the end result. So bear with me here as I, as I go over here to our graphics. So a little bit about the data before we go right into the code. Um, the past couple of weeks, I've been doing a lot of traveling. I just flew back from the West Coast yesterday. So I've been dealing with my fair share of flight delays and I thought this would be a really cool topic to explore. And luckily the Bureau of Transportation Statistics uh, has a lot of data based on carrier reports on number of flights and number of flight delays. So I use that data to create the two graphics that we'll be exploring today. So in this graphic, it is a basic scatter plot. Uh, you can see each dot represents a airline, and then you have the total flights on the x-axis and the percentage of flight delays on the y-axis. Uh, so you can see here uh, air carriers like Southwest and Delta, uh, typically bigger brands also have uh, a lot more flights than, for instance, smaller airline carriers like Hawaiian. Uh, now the interactive component that I wanna talk about in this example is namely gonna be tooltips and how to apply a basic hover styling. So here, if I'm hovering, for instance, over JetBlue, you could see it's revealing more information, which includes total flights, uh, total number of delays, and the percentage of flights delayed. Also note that now when I'm hovering over the dot, it's highlighting it in this kind of light green color, which it accents it away from all of the other airline carriers in blue. All right, so I want us now to jump back into the code to see what that looks like behind the scenes. So remember, this is just basic scatter plot that you're doing with Geom Point. All right, so apologize if I'm giving folks whiplash as I'm going through the slides. I'm trying to definitely be, be conservative on time here. So before diving into our GG plot, I wanted to give an example of kind of an elevated tooltip. Uh, you could definitely map tooltips to uh, just a column within your data set. But if you want to reveal multiple um, columns within the data, you could stitch things together with like a paste function. In this instance, I'm going to be working with glue. Uh, if you're not familiar with glue, it's a nice way of combining static strings with elements within your data set. And here, this is just a lot of HTML. So you can see I've got total flights and I'm passing in flight, uh, total flights and formatting it. And this is gonna come up here in this tooltip part of Geom Point Interactive. So the first thing is I'm using my equivalent of the interactive for, for Geom Point. 
A lot of this is going to look the same if you're just using regular geom points. So I've got my X, I've got my Y. Outside of my aesthetic mapping, I also have uh, some parameters here to specify the size, the shape, and the fill and stroke color. Now the key difference here is I'm setting a data ID. So the data ID that I'm using here is carrier name. Uh, if you're working with data sets that have their own unique IDs, you might be using carrier ID, but because carrier name is unique enough for each record, I'm using this as my anchor point or my data ID. Tool tip, I'm now wrapping this in this glue function to create that HTML tool tip that we created above. And then last but not least here, I'm setting my hover argument and passing in some CSS code. So here in the CSS code, if you're not familiar with CSS, I'm passing in a fill value, which I guess is familiar enough because we're using fill as well here to dictate um, the fill color for, for the point. So for the fill color, I'm specifying this light green hex code variable. And then for the stroke color or what, what the border of that dot would be, I'm passing in the color of white. All right. So once we've assembled this ggplot, and there's a lot going on with it, but I just want us to focus on, on this geom point interactive. So the key thing takeaways here, you're setting up a data ID, you're setting up the tooltip, and you're setting up what should happen when we're hovering over that point. I'm also storing this, by the way, as its own uh, variable. So I'm storing all of this ggplot code as scatterplot. Oh. And now at the very end, I'm passing it into that draft function. So the first thing that I'm, I'm stating is here's my GG uh, object, which is scatterplot. We're gonna introduce uh, a couple of other parameters. So width SVG and height SVG. So um, if, you're, if you're curious what SVG stands for, it's support vector graphic because we are converting it into one big support vector graphic. And these parameters are specified in inches. So here I have it as six and 3.5. And now um, this, is, this is the trickier thing to wrap your head around if, if you're newer to uh, this package. And this is passing in a list of options. So the first option that I'm passing in, and this is not one that we've discussed in earlier slides, is Opt's toolbar. Uh, so the default setting with Giraffe when you're creating these visuals is it's gonna have this like download button in the corner where you can create an SVG, uh, sorry, a static PNG. I want to get rid of that, so I'm just automatically passing an ops toolbar and setting save as PNG equals to false. Uh, but this is the main thing that I want to highlight here is this ops tooltip. So ops tooltip is setting that default uh, styling for when we're creating the tooltip for our graphics. So some of the CSS prop, uh, attributes that I'm uh, setting off the bat is the font family. Uh, I believe the default font family for tooltips is, is some serif font out of the box. Uh, the background color, which I'm setting is black. If you want like rounded edges to your tooltip, you can introduce border radius. Notice that I am separating each argument with a semicolon. This is common in CSS. Uh, so this is how we're chaining all of those styling um, attributes together. Color represents font color. And last but not least, this padding uh, is adding some buffer between the text and the tooltip background. So all of that comes together then to create our interactive graphic. So now we can hover, it turns green, and we can see that the tooltip styling has been applied where it's got that rounded, rounded edge and you can see like a black background with a uh, white font color. All right. Uh, Tanya, yes, sorry, yes. there is someone that want to ask a question. You want to take it now or later? Um, if if is it okay if we could do it later? I'm just I'm just trying to like run through all of this. Okay, yes, no, for me it's fine later. Okay, perfect, okay. later. Perfect, awesome. No, I love that we're already getting questions, but I'll I promise I'll get to as many as I can after. A uh, quick run through of the second plot. So I'm gonna skip right to the output first. So in this uh, example, what I wanna cover is just a couple of additional styling techniques. Uh, the first example was a heavier focus on tooltips. 
So here we have the an exploratory vis to see the seasonality of flight delays by month for, for last year. And the interactive component happens on hover. So I wanna call out a couple of things here before we go to the code. So I can either hover on the text and it's going to accent the line in a blue color. You'll also notice that it creates kind of this uh, faded out look for the rest of the flight. So it really helps accent what we're focusing on while all the other things kind of fade into the background. I can also hover over the line and it, it does the same thing. So I'm doing both of these components all at once. Okay. So how do we do this on the back end? So now we're working, there's a couple of things that you might think. Of course, we're using geom line to create our line plot and we're using geom text to create these labels. All right, so diving right into the code. First thing at a high, high level glance, you'll notice that I'm using two interactive geoms. So here we're using geom line interactive and we're using geom text interactive. Geom line interactive, similar to our geom point, similar, um, similar default uh, mappings here that we would expect in geom line. You've got an X, you've got a Y. We're grouping by carrier name to create multiple lines. We're also setting our data ID to carrier name. Notice that I don't have any other mappings to inform uh, what the hover styling is going to be. We'll cover that at the very end. We also have a geom text interactive component. So here you've got uh, data ID is also set to carrier name, label set to carrier name, but no other interactive parameters in this aside from the data ID. Okay. This is where the bulk of the interactive code comes into play. So we're using that giraffe function again. We're passing in our ggplot object. You're setting the width and height. And here we now have a long list of, of uh, different parameters within our options. So just like before, we're turning off that save as PNG feature. And here's the interesting thing that start, is start coming into view. So uh, ops hover, is where we can set the default CSS for things. So I like using ops hover in this area when I'm working with multiple geom interactives and I want to have the same uh, styling applied to all of the different elements. So the hover CSS function that we use within the geom uh, layer is specific to that geom, but, and, and it will override any of the default settings. But if I want to apply a consistent styling to all of those geoms that share a data ID, this is a nice way of doing it. So within opt hover, I have CSS is set to another function called giraffe CSS. Giraffe CSS, you have a couple of different arguments. The main one is going to be CSS, which is your default. But let's say you're working with text elements or you know lines, which translate into polylines or points. You can also say, I only want um, this CSS to apply to text components or to point components. Um, the reason that I've differentiated these two is that if you apply, for instance, a stroke width uh, or a stroke color on CSS, for text, it actually starts outlining it as well. So here I'm overriding it and saying for my text object, I want my stroke color to be nothing. Uh, and I'm also specifying that I want the font bolded. Here for the CSS on hover, I'm setting the stroke color to this blue hex code, setting the opacity to one. Uh, and I'm setting stroke width to kind of bold that line. So I'm setting it to 1.75. Additionally, I'm also adding some CSS to everything that's not being highlighted. So remember when I'm highlighting one airline carrier, uh, the rest of the airline carriers kind of turn, uh, kind of fade into the background. So I'm adding this opacity with CSS. Uh, if you're not familiar with opacity in, in CSS, the equivalent would be, for instance, setting alpha values uh, in your geoms, and that'll give it that faded look. And I, I like using this trick a lot, especially when you have multiple different things at play, because it really helps draw focus to the main thing that you're uh, trying to accent, and you're kind of hiding all the other stuff in the background. You can definitely set an opacity uh, closer to zero, to kind of create that invisible look if you want all of them to fade completely. 
And there's a lot of different tricks that you can do with this. I've used two interactive geoms uh, to display how data IDs work. Uh, another cool thing that I've, I've seen uh, folks use is also patchwork. So in theory, you could chain together two GG ob objects and then pass it into the draft function. Uh, so if you ho hover over one plot that has a data ID that's shared by another plot, it will do them um, in tandem, which is a really cool feature too. But that is all the time we have for today. This has been a lot of fun. Uh, and I think the the funnest part is going to be opening it up to create some dialogue, uh, answer some questions, uh, but hopefully this has been fun for you and uh, thank you so much for joining me today.